Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Director of Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Last night on the 29th of November, I gave a talk at the office. We had an open house with the subject being getting your wow back. What does that mean? It means feeling good again, having energy, clarity, physicality, sex drive, sexual function, memory, um, all the good stuff. And how, do, how does that happen? How do you get your wow back if you haven't felt well? Well, mostly it has to do with hormones and NAD and getting your mitochondria to work. So there's environmental factors. Always keep in mind, better diet, not smoking, ambulating. That means walking and uh, perhaps exercising would be beneficial. Those are all really good things. Not eating, not eating crappy food. That's another good thing. But ultimately, mitochondrial function to get your cells to work and mitochondria make energy packets. We want the cells to work, so we need the mitochondria to work. And then once the cells work, the tissue works, the organs work, and the body works. So what are central things we need to think about? We always need to think about thyroid. Thyroid is such a complicated subject because uh, I don't think people understand it very well when it's really not that complicated of a subject. So the summary on thyroid, sim simple, simple, simple. You have three main thyroid hormones to think about. Thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. It goes up as your thyroid levels go down because it's trying to stimulate more function. So higher TSH means lower thyroid function. What does the thyroid make? It makes thyroxine or T4 as its primary product. T4 means the thyroid hormone has four iodine molecules on it, four. You have this crazy little enzyme in there called 2,3-deiodinase, which goes whack and knocks one of those off and it becomes T3. Free T3 is what does all the work, okay? That's the big ticket item that we're gonna come back to. T4 is very important for preventing congestive heart failure, coma, stillborn, miscarriage, and occasionally can also help with mood. It's the conversion to T4 to T3 that really takes care of clinical symptoms, energy, clarity, muscle strength, metabolism, lowering insulin. And it does all this from its effects both directly in the nucleus of, cell, the nucleus of cells and in the mitochondria of cells. So if your T4 is high and your T3 is low or mediocre, you don't have any metabolism. There's a great study from 2007 that defined this forever. The American Endocrine Society has begrudgingly sometimes said that, well, you know, if you don't even have a thyroid, you have to have free T3 added. And that's kind of the central thing we see in thyroid disease in Optimal Health Associates. People come in and they go, oh, my doctor says my numbers are good, but I feel like, you know, soggy toast or something. And it's because their free T3 is low and so they can't get a benefit, a true benefit that's clinically apparent. And they've been told a million times that, well, your TSH is fine and your levels are normal. They're not normal, the reference ranges. Um, so you don't need anything else. Well, the American Endocrine Society finally, about a month and a half ago, put out an op-ed saying that maybe thyroid levels need to be reflective of what was when they were younger. And maybe as they get older and the T3 levels fall, and they didn't get this specific, but as those levels fall, maybe we haven't been doing it right. We need to really think of it more as what's the best optimal level in, in the op-ed. Uh, but they said that it would take 20 years to figure it out. So that's what we do, we optimize the thyroid, that's key. The other thing that was pretty funny in the op-ed from the American Endocrine Society was that they endorsed hormone replacement therapy and menopause for essentially the first time, which I was stunned at. Why would you endorse hormone replacement ther therapy? Oh, I know, because you want to get your wow back. You know, people don't feel good. And so what do hormones do? They work in the cell, they work in the nucleus, they work in the mitochondria, they work in every cell. But the ones we wanna focus on really for oomph and energy is testosterone and DHEA. The ovary makes four times the amount of testosterone as it does estrogen. So we're confronted all the time. I had several patients in today who were new. When I brought up testosterone, they're like, that's the male hormone. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's the unisex hormone. Estrogen's really the unique hormone to women. I have some estrogen, but you know, and guys do, but we don't wanna get really any kind of reasonably elevated level for us, which is to go beyond the menopausal range in a woman, um, because all of a sudden we're getting roly-poly, and we all know what that means in certain spots in the chest, 
And so, and you don't want to end up looking like your grandmother. So you don't want too much estrogen when you're a guy. You want a little, but it's in the menopausal range in a woman. So girls need testosterone. It does amazing things for cellular function. It can repress a variety of disease processes. So it's everything. So it can help facilitate clearer thinking, positive mood, deeper sleep, muscle strength, lean body mass, and sex drive and sexual function. So very important. Guys, it's the same thing. It's very safe for guys. The only way you don't really want to use testosterone may be doing injections. You can use them and we still use them, but we always have to have people on fish oil for that because there's a teeny tiny increased risk for a uh, stroke um, in one study, only one, but it's there so you can still do injections, but we use creams, we use pellets, we occasionally use patches. We try to find the most cost-effective way. Either way, when you're thinking about this stuff, the testosterone's best delivered in a pellet form, but again, you get a stable level. So if you've heard of pellets, they just go in under the buttock and they work. Um, estrogen is still super important. Uh, definitely a massive benefit for women. Uh, lowers the risk for breast cancer. Breast cancer death, yes. Uh, the final 20-year data on the Women's Health Initiative came out in September of 2021, showing all of this. Um, massive reduction in fatal heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular incidence, all-cause mortality, essentially 50% over a 20 year period of time. And as I always tell people in our office, when they're looking around in the front office, when they're questioning about what, why would I do hormones? I said, start looking around the office and look at the older women. And you'll see, you'll be able to tell which ones have been on hormone replacement therapy and which ones that haven't. And the reason I say that is because it's obvious and think, yes, their skin's better, their hair's better, they look more vibrant. It's the same thing internally. So that's also part of getting your while back. Uh, and then the final thing I want everyone to think about is NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. Easy to say. So that's niacin, broken down several steps. NAD helps drive the mitochondria. It is great for limiting neurodegenerative disease processes. So things like Alzheimer's, dementia, um, sometimes it can play a role in Parkinson's and a variety of other disease things in, in the neurologic area. Uh, again, metabolism, energy, um, immune function, really too many to name because NAD is in every cell. And so if you don't have enough of it in your mitochondria, then you don't feel as well as you could. So those, that was kind of the quickly stated spread of topics is what makes the cells work to make the tissue works, to make the body work, to make the organ work. And keep in mind, mitochondrial dysfunction is what causes cancer. It is not anything else. Abnormal mitochondrial function or lower ATPs make cells, cell splits go awry because it takes energy to duplicate yourself and split apart if you're a cell. You have to have enough ATPs to do it correctly. So again, what makes that go awry? Well, toxins, industrial solvents, hmm, they cause cancer. Smoking, oh yeah, it causes cancer. You know, things like that are very bad. And that's how it works. They work in part is they cause abnormal DNA to unwind and they also damage the ability of the uh, mitochondria to produce ATPs. So that's the summary of the wow, because we want people to have the wow. So good night and take care.